Jeff, these are really timeless leadership principles that that worked for you back then and would work today. So if you think about that, are there two or three things that you feel like are sort of the timeless in that way that you feel like it's just a matter of, of how you lead? Now you can deliver the message like we are by Zoom or some other modern technology, so to speak, but the principles are the same. So as you look at the world up, up ahead, what would you want you know, current aspiring leaders to know about? I, I, I have told people, and, and this is a, a, has become ever stronger with me over the decades since then. And I believe in full engagement. If you asked me in 1982 what the benefit of it was, I would have said great execution because they own it. But today I would say much better ideas if you start the engagement early enough because you're not smart enough. <laughs> You're not smart enough and you got all these brains that are dying to contribute. So, you know, let them in and now you'll get ownership and execution, but you're also going to get better ideas uh, and you're going to be creating the leaders of the future because you're taking them through the essential process of leadership. So I refer to that as emergent leadership because if you do that, I believe you get leadership at all levels of the organization. It doesn't matter what somebody's title is. And then you've got a, an organization that's probably going to levitate, right? Because that that's going on. And, you know, you've seen the Gallup stuff. Only 31% of U.S. employees are engaged in what the company's doing. It hasn't changed for 17 years. You can, you can fix it, but you've got to take a page out of that. So I think that that Brinker, who was kind of an outlier, in 1982, I'd like to think that we're on the road from top-down command and control hierarchical model to a, a model of full engagement with a servant leadership kind of approach from the key leaders within any organization. Uh, I think it's happening. I don't, I'm not convinced it's happening quickly enough because mm. there's, you know, the usual barrier for that is fear. Um, the leader's afraid of losing control. And I saw a great line in a, in a uh, Northrop Grumman PowerPoint I found online because I was looking for stuff on this. And there was a, a, a page in their PowerPoint because they were trying to practice this. And it said, I don't know where they got the quote, uh, the opposite of control is discovery. And I thought, <laughs> wow, right on. And, yeah. and people resist that opening up because they're afraid of losing control or they're afraid that somebody above them is going to ask them a question they can't answer. Kind of the same thing, right? Um, but you had the way to on, on cork the capability and the potential of an organization is I think you gotta, you gotta take that approach. And again, Brinker was the first guy. I've never seen anybody do that. 